The Book of the Secrets of Enoch, Chapter 31 And Adam had a life on earth. And I made a garden in Eden in the east. And I ordained that he should observe the law and keep the instruction. I made for him the heavens open that he should perceive the angels singing the song of triumph. And there was light without any darkness continually in paradise. And the devil took thought as if wishing to make another world because things were subservient to Adam on earth to rule it and have lordship over it. The devil is to be the evil spirit of the lowest places. He became Satan after he left the heavens. His name was formerly Satanil. And then, though he became different from the angels in nature, he did not change his understanding of just and sinful thoughts. He understood the judgment upon him and the former sin which he had sinned. And on account of this, he conceived designs against Adam. In such a manner, he entered and deceived Eve. He did not touch Adam, but I cursed him for his ignorance. But those I previously blessed, them I did not curse, nor man did I curse, nor the earth, nor any other things created, but the evil fruit of man, and then his works. And I said to him, Earth thou art, and to earth also from whence I took thee, shall thy return. I will not destroy thee, but will send thee whence I took thee. Then I can also take thee in my second coming, and I have blessed all my creation, visible and invisible. And I blessed the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, for in it I rested from all my labours. Then also I established the eighth day. Let the eighth be the first after my work, and let the days be after the fashion of seven thousand. Let there be at the beginning of the eight thousand a time when there is no computation and no end, neither years or months, nor weeks, nor days, nor hours. And now, Enoch, what things have I told thee, and what hast thou understood? And what heavenly things thou hast seen, and what thou hast seen upon the earth, and what thou hast written in books by my wisdom, all these things I devised so as to create them, and I made them from the highest, for, highest foundation to the lowest and to the end. And there is no counsellor, no inheritor of my works. I am the Eternal One, and the One not made with hands. My thought is without change. My wisdom is my counsellor, and my word is reality. And my eyes see all things. If I look to all things, they stand fast. If I turn away my face, all are in need of me. And now pay attention, Enoch, and know thou who is speaking to thee. And do thou take the books which thou thyself hast written, and I give thee Samuel and Ragiel, who brought thee to me, and go with them upon the earth, and tell thy sons what things I have said to thee, and what thou hast seen from the lowest heaven 
up to my throne. For I have created all the hosts and all the powers, and there is none that opposes me or is disobedient to me. For all are obedient to my soul power and labour for my rule alone. Give them the works written out by thee, and they shall read them, and know me to be the creator of all, and shall understand that there is no other God beside me. They shall distribute the books of thy writing to their children's children, and from generation to generation, and from nation to nation. And I will give thee, Enoch, my messenger, the great Captain Michael, for thy writings and for the writings of thy fathers, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Malhalal, and Jared thy father. And I shall not require them till the last age, for I have instructed my two angels, Aracha and Paracha, whom I have put upon the earth as their guardians, and I have ordered them in time to guard them, that the account of what I shall do in thy family may not be lost in the deluge to come. For I know the wickedness of men, that they will not bear the yoke which I have put upon them, nor sow the seeds which I have given them, but will cast off my yoke and accept another, and sow vain seeds and bow to vain gods and deny me the only God. And they will fill all the earth with wickedness and iniquity and foul impurities with one another, sodomy and all other impure practices which it is foul to speak about. And on this account I will bring a deluge upon the earth, and I will destroy all, and the earth shall be destroyed in great corruption. And I will leave a righteous man of thy race with all his house, who shall act according to my will. From their seed, after some time, will be raised up a numerous generation. But of these, many will be very insatiable. Then, on the extinction of that family, I will show them the books of thy writings and of thy father's, and the guardians of them on earth will show them to the men who are true and please me, who do not take my name in vain, and they shall tell to another generation, and these having read them shall be glorified at last more than before. And now, Enoch, I give thee a period of thirty days to work in thy house, and tell thy thy sons and all thy household before me that they may listen to what is spoken to them by thee that they read and understand how there is no other god beside me and let them always keep my commandments and begin to read and understand the books written out by thee and after thirty days I will send my angels for thee, and they shall take thee from the earth and from thy sons according to my will. And God called one of his greatest angels, terrible and awful, and placed him by me. And the appearance of that angel was like snow, and his hands were like ice. He had a very cold appearance. And my face was chilled because I could not endure the fear of the Lord. Just as it is not possible to enjoy the, endure the mighty fire and heat of the sun and the frost of the air. And the Lord said to me, Enoch, if thy face is still chill here, no man can look upon thy face. Sorry. 
Enoch, if thy face is not chill here, no man can look upon thy face. And the Lord said to the to those men who first took me, Take Enoch with you to the earth and wait for him till the appointed day. And at night they placed me upon my bed, and Malthusel, expecting my coming, by day and by night was a guard at my bed. And he was terrified when he heard my coming, and I gave him directions that all my household should come, that I might tell them everything. Listen, my children, what things are according to the will of the Lord. I am sent today to you to tell you from the lips of the Lord what was and what is happening now and what will be before the day of judgment. Hear, my children, for I do not speak to you today from my lips, but from the lips of the Lord who sent me to you. For you hear the words of my lips a mortal man like yourselves. I have seen the face of the Lord, as it were I am that is heated in the fire, and who brought out, sends forth sparks and burns. And look at the eyes of me, a man laden with a sign for you. I have seen the eyes of the Lord shining like a ray of the sun, and striking with terror human eyes. You, my children, see the right hand of a man made like yourselves, assisting you. I have seen the right hand of the Lord assisting me and filling the heavens. You see the compass of my actions like to your own. I have seen the measureless and harmonious form of the Lord. To him there is no end. You therefore hear the words of my lips, but I have heard the words of the Lord like great thunder with continual agitation of the clouds. And now, my children, listen to the discourses of your earthly father. It is terrible and awful to stand before the face of an earthly prince. Terrible and awful because the will of the prince is death and the will of the prince is life. How much more is it terrible and awful to stand before the face of the Lord of Lords and of the earthly and heavenly hosts? Who can endure this never-ending terror? And now, my children, I know all things from the lips of the Lord, for my eyes have seen from the beginning to the end. I know all things and have written all things in the books, both the heavens and the end of them, and their fullness and all the hosts. And I have measured their goings and written down the stars and their innumerable quantity. What man has seen their alternations and their goings? Not even the angels know their number. I have written down the names of all. And I have measured the circle of the sun, and I have measured its rays, and his coming in and going out through all the, ma- all the months, and all his courses, and their names I have written down. I have measured the circle of the moon and its waning, which occurs during every day, and the secret places in which it hides every day and ascends according to all the hours. I have laid down the four seasons, and from the seasons I made four circles, and in the circles I placed the years, I placed the months, and from the months I calculated the days, And from the days I have calculated the hours. Moreover, I have written down all things moving upon the earth. I have written down all things that are nourished. All seeds sown and unsown, which grows on the earth. And all things belonging to the garden. And every herb 
and every flower and their fragrances and their names and the dwellings of the clouds and their formations and their wings how they bring rain and the raindrops I investigated all and I wrote down the course of the thunder and lightning and they showed me the keys and their guardians and their path by which they go they are brought forth in bonds in measured degree and are let go in bonds less by their heavy course and vehemence they should overload the clouds of wrath and destroy everything on earth. I have written down the treasures of the snow and the storehouses of the hail and the cool breezes and I observe the holder of the keys of them during the season and how he fills the clouds with them and yet does not exhaust their treasures. I wrote down the abodes of the winds and I observed and saw how those who hold their keys bear balances and measures. And in the first place they put them on a balance. In the second they let them go and measure moderately with care over the whole earth. So that with their heavy breathing they should not shake the whole earth. For I have measured the whole earth. Its mountains and all hills, fields, trees, stones, rivers, all things that exist I have written down. The height from earth to the seventh heaven and down to the lowest hell. The place of judgment and the mighty hell laid open and full of lamentation. And I saw how the prisoners suffer awaiting the immeasurable judgment. And I wrote out all of those who are being judged by the judge and all the judgment they receive and all their deeds. And I saw all our forefathers from the beginning with Adam and Eve. And I sighed and wept and spake with the ruin caused by their wickedness. Woe to me for my infirmity and that of my forefathers. And I meditated in my heart and said, Blessed is the man who was not born, or having been born has never sinned before the face of the Lord, so that he should not come into this place to bear the yoke of this place. I saw those who kept the keys and are the guardians of the gates of hell, standing like great serpents, and their faces were like quenched lamps, and their eyes were fiery, and their teeth were sharp, and they were stripped to the waist. And I said before their faces, Would that I had not seen you, nor heard of your doings, and that those of my race had never come to you. Now they have only sinned a little in this life and always suffer in the eternal life. I went out to the east, to the paradise of Eden, where rest has been prepared for the just, and it is open to the third heaven and shut from this world. The guards are placed at the very great gates of the east of the sun, Fiery angels singing triumphant songs that never cease rejoicing in the presence of the just. At the last coming, they will lead forth Adam with our forefathers and conduct them there, that they may rejoice as a man calls those whom he loves to feast with him. And they have come with joy held converse before the dwelling of that man, with joy awaiting his feast the enjoyment and the immeasurable wealth and joy and merriment in the light and eternal life. Then I said, I tell you, my children, blessed is he who fears the name of the Lord and serves continually before his face and brings his gifts with fear continually in this life and lives all his life justly and dies. Blessed is he who executes a just judgment, 
not for the sake of recompense, but for the sake of righteousness, expecting nothing in return, a sincere judgment shall afterwards come to him. Blessed is he who clothes the naked with the garment and gives his bread to the hungry. Blessed is he who gives a just judgment for the orphan and the widow and assists every one who is wronged. Blessed is he who turns from the unstable path of this vain world and walks by the righteous path which leads to eternal life. Blessed is he who sows just seed. He shall reap sevenfold. Blessed is he in whom is the truth, that he may speak the truth to his neighbour. Blessed is he who has love upon his lips and tenderness in his heart. Blessed is he who understands every work of the Lord and glorifies the Lord God, for the works of the Lord are just, and the works of man, some are good, and others evil, and by their works those who have wrought them are known. Lo, my children, the things which I have gained on the earth and meditated upon from the Lord God I have written down, both winter and summer. I have compiled the accounts of all, and concerning the years I have calculated each hour. I have measured the hours and written out the lists of them, and I have ascertained all their differences. As one year is more honourable than another, so is one man more honourable than another. This man on account of many possessions, that man on account of the wisdom of his heart, this man on account of understanding, another on account of cunning, this man for the silence of his lips, this man on account of purity, that on account of strength, this man on account of comeliness, another on account of youth, this man on account of sharpness of mind, another on account of quick-sightedness of body, and another for the perception of many things. Let it be heard everywhere, there is no greater than he who fears God. He shall be the most glorious forever. God made man with his own hands in the likeness of his countenance. Both small and great, the Lord created him. He who reviles the countenance of man reviles the countenance of the Lord. He who shows wrath against another without injury, the great wrath of the Lord shall consume him. If a man spits at the face of another insultingly, he shall be consumed in the great judgment of the Lord. Blessed is the man who does not direct his heart with malice against any man, and who assists the man who is injured, and under judgment, and raises up the oppressed, and accomplishes the prayer of him who asks. For in the day of the great judgment, every measure and standard and weight, which is for traffic, namely, that which is hung on a balance and stands for traffic, knows its own measure and shall receive its reward by measure. He who hastens and brings his offering before the face of the Lord, then the Lord will hasten the accomplishment of his work and will execute a just judgment for him. He who increases his lamp before the face of the Lord, the Lord increases greatly his treasure in the kingdom of heaven. God does not require bread, nor a light, nor an animal, nor any other sacrifice, for it is as nothing. But God requires a pure heart, and by means of all this, he tries the heart of a man.
Hear, my people, and pay attention to the words of my lips. If anyone brings gifts to an earthly prince, but having unfaithfulness in his heart, if the prince knows it, he will, no, will he not be angry with him on account of that? And he will not take his gift and will hand him over to condemnation. If a man flatters another in his language but plans evil against him in his heart, will not the other understand the craft of his heart and he himself will be condemned so that his unrighteousness will be evident to all? But when God shall send a great light by means of that, there will be judgment to the just and unjust, and nothing will be concealed. Now, my children, put my thoughts in your hearts and pay attention to the words of your Father, which have come to you from the mouth of the Lord. Take these books of the writings of your Father and read them, and in them ye shall learn all the works of the Lord. There have been many books from the beginning of creation and shall be to the end of the world. But none shall make things known to you like my writings. But if you shall preserve my writings, you will not sin against God. For there is no other besides the Lord, neither in heaven nor on earth, nor the depths below, nor the solitary foundations. God extends Establish the foundations upon things that are unknown and stretched out the visible and invisible heavens and made firm the earth upon the waters and establish the waters on things that are not fixed. Who has created all the innumerable works of creation? Sorry, who has numbered? Oh yeah, who has created all the innumerable works of creation? And who has numbered the dust of the earth and the sand of the sea and the drops of rain and the dew of the morning and the breadth of the wind? Who has bound earth and sea with bonds that cannot be broken up and has cut the stars out of fire and beautified the heavens and placed the sun in the midst of them? The sun goes in the seven circles of the heavens and I gave him thrones when he goes on a short day and also 182 th thrones when he goes on a long day. And he has two great thrones on which he rests, returning hither and thither above the monthly thrones from the month of Tisvan. After 17 days, he descends to the month of Tithvan. And from the seventeenth day of the Vard, he ascends. And so the sun goes through all the courses of the heaven. When he goes near the earth, then the earth rejoices and produces its fruit. When he departs, then the earth is sad and the trees and the fruits have no development. All this by measure and minute, arrangement of time, he has arranged by his wisdom, both in the case of things, visible and invisible. He has made all things visible out of invisible, himself being invisible. Thus I tell you, my children, Distribute the books to your children and all your families and among the nations. Those who are wise, let them fear God and let them receive them and let them love them more than any kind of food and read them. But those who are senseless and have no thought of the Lord and do not fear God will not receive them but turn away and keep themselves from them. The terrible judgment shall await them. Blessed is the man who bears their yoke and puts it on, for he shall be set free in the day of the great judgment. For I swear to you, my children, but I will not swear by a single oath, neither by heaven, nor by earth, nor by any other creature which God made.
God said, There is no swearing in me, nor injustice, but truth. If there is no truth in men, let them swear by a word, yea, yea, or nay, nay. But I swear to you, yea, yea, that there has not been even a man in his mother's womb for whom a place has not been prepared for every soul. And a measure is fixed. How long a man shall be tried in this world? Oh, my children, be not deceived. There is a place prepared. There for every soul of man. I have laid down in the writings the actions of every man, and no one born on the earth can hide himself, nor can his deeds be concealed. I see all. Now, therefore, my children, in patience and meekness, accomplish the number of your days, and ye shall inherit the endless life which is to come. Every wound and every affliction and every evil word and attack endured for the sake of the Lord. And when you might have vengeance, do not repay either your neighbour or your enemy. For God will repay as your avenger in the day of the great judgment. Let it not be for you to take vengeance. Whoever of you shall spend gold or silver for the sake of a brother shall receive abundant treasure in the day of judgment and stretch out your hands to the orphan, the widow and the stranger. Stretch out your hands to the poor man according to your powers and do not hide your silver in the earth. Assist the honest man in his affliction and affliction shall not come upon you in the time of your labour. And whatever violent and grievous yoke shall be put upon you, endure it for the Lord's sake, and so you will receive your reward in the day of judgment. Morning, afternoon and evening, it is good to go into the house of the Lord to glorify the Creator of all. Wherefore, let everything that hath breath Glorify him, and let every creature, visible and invisible, give forth praise. Blessed is the man who opens his lips to praise the Lord God of the Sabbath, and praises the Lord with his heart. Cursed is every man who opens his lips to abuse and to commun communicate his neighbour. Blessed is he who opens his lips to the blessing and praise of God. Cursed is he who opens his lips to swearing and blasphemy before the face of the Lord all his days. Blessed is he who blesses all the works of the Lord. Cursed is he who speaks ill of the works of the Lord. Blessed is he who looks to raise his own hand for labour. Cursed is he who looks to make use of another man's labour. Blessed is he who preserves the foundations of his fathers from the beginning. And cursed is he who breaks enchantments of his fathers. Blessed is he who establishes peace and love. Cursed is he who troubles those who are at peace. And blessed is he who does not speak peace with his tongue, but in his heart there is peace to all. Cursed is he who speaks peace with his tongue, but in his heart there is no peace. For all these things in measures and in books will be revealed in the day of the great judgment. And now, my children, do not say our Father stands before God and prays for us to be released from sin. For there is no person there to help any man who has sinned. You see how I have written down all the works of every man before his creation, which is done in the case of all men forever. And no man can say or unsay what I have written with my hand. For God sees all things, even the thoughts of wicked men, which lie in the store places of the heart. 
And now, my children, pay attention to the words of your father, which I say to you, that ye may not grieve afterwards and say, Our father, for some cause or other, never told them to us in the time of his folly. Let these books which I have given you be the inheritance of your peace. Do not conceal them, but tell them to all desiring them and admonish them that they may know the works of the Lord, which are very wonderful. My children, the appointed day and time have drawn near and constrained me to depart. The angels will come and stand before me on the earth, awaiting what has been ordered them. In the morning I shall go to the highest heaven, to my eternal habitation. Therefore I tell you, to do all that is good before the face of the Lord. Methuselah, having answered his father Enoch, said, If it is good in thine eyes, my father, let me put food before thy face. And then, having blessed our houses and thy sons and all thy family, let thy people be glorified by thee. And then afterwards wilt thou wilt depart, as God has said, and Enoch answered his son Methuselah and said, Hear, my child, since God has appointed me with the oil of his glory, there has been no food in me, and my soul remembers nothing of earthly pleasure, nor do I desire anything earthly. But call all thy brothers and all your families and the elders of the people, that I may speak to them and depart as is appointed for me. And Methuselah hastened and called his brethren, Rajin, Reman, Achan, uh, uh, Kirman, Gadal, and the elders of the people, and brought them all before the face of his father Enoch. And having blessed them, he spoke to them. Listen to me, my sons. In those days when the Lord came upon the earth for the sake of Adam and visited all his creation which he himself had made, the Lord called all the cattle of the earth and all creeping thing and all the fowls that fly in the air and brought them all before the face of our father Adam. And he gave names to all the living things on the earth. And the Lord made him Lord over all and put all things under his hands, and subdued them to submission, and to all obedience to man. So the Lord created man as master over all his possessions. The Lord will not judge any soul of beast on account of man, but he will judge the soul of man on account of the souls of the beasts in the world to come. For as there is a special place for mankind, for all the souls of men according to their number. So there is also of beasts. And not one soul shall perish which God has made to the great judgment. Every soul of beast shall bring a charge against man if he feeds them badly. He who acts lawlessly with regard to the souls of beasts acts lawlessly with regard to his own soul. For a man offers clean animals and makes a sacrifice that he may preserve his soul. And if he offer as a sacrifice from clean beasts and birds, he preserves his soul. Everything that is given for, given you for food, bind by the four feet, that is an atonement. He acts righteously therein and preserves his soul. But he who kills a beast without a wound kills his own soul and sins against his own flesh. And if anyone does an injury to an animal secretly, it is an evil custom and he sins against his own soul. If he does not injure to the soul of man, he does an injury to his own soul. So if he does an injury to the soul of a man, he does an injury to his own soul. 
and there is no salvation for his flesh nor forgiveness forever. He who kills the soul of a man kills his own soul and destroys his own body. And there is no salvation for him forever. He who prepares a net for another man will fall into it himself and there is no salvation for him forever. He who prepares a weapon against a man shall not escape punishment in the great judgment forever. If a man acts crookedly or speaks evil against any soul, he shall have no righteousness for himself forever. Now therefore, my children, preserve your hearts from every unrighteousness which the Lord hates. As a man asks his soul from God, so let him do to every living soul. For in the world to come I know all things, how that there are many mansions prepared for man, good for good, evil for evil, many and without number. Blessed are those who shall go to the mansions of the blessed, for in the evil ones there is no rest, nor any means of return from them. Listen, my children, both small and great, when a man conceives a good thought in his heart and brings gifts before the Lord of his labours, if his hands have not wrought them, then the Lord turns away his face from the labour of his hands, and he cannot gain advantage from the work of his hands. But if his hands have wrought, but his heart murmurs, and he does not make an offering of his heart, but murmurs continually, he has no success. Blessed is the man who, who in patience shall bring his gifts before the face of the Lord, for he shall avert the recompense of his sin. If he speaks words out of season, there is no repentance for him. If he lets the appointed time pass and does not perform the work, he is not blessed, for there is no repentance after death. For every deed which a man does unseasonably is an offence before men and a sin before God. When a man clothes the naked and feeds the hungry, he gets a recompense from God. If his heart murmurs, he works for himself a double evil. He works destruction to that which he gives, and there shall be no reward for it. And the poor man, when his heart is satisfied or his flesh is closed, and he acts contentiously, he destroys the effort of all his endurance of poverty and shall not gain the blessing of a recompense. For the Lord hates every contentiousness and proud speaking man, and likewise every lying word that which, and that which is covered with unrighteousness, and it is cut with the sharpness of a deadly sword and thrown into the fire and burns forever. When Enoch said these words to his sons and the princes of the people, all the people far and near heard how the Lord called Enoch. And they took counsel and they all said, Let us go and kiss Enoch. And the men assembled in the number of two thousand and came to the place Archuzan, Archuzan, A-C-H-U-Z-A-N, Archuzan, where Enoch was and his sons. And the elders of the people came together and made obstinance and kissed Enoch and said to him, Enoch, our father, be thou blessed of the Lord, the eternal King. And now bless thy sons and all the people that we may be glorified before thee today. For thou art glorified before the face of the Lord for ever, since God has chosen thee above all men upon the earth and has appointed thee as the scribe of his creation of visible and invisible things, and an avenger of the sins of men, and a secure of thy family. And Enoch answered all his people, saying, Listen, my children, before that anything existed, 
and all creatures were made. The Lord made all things, both visible and invisible. When the times of these things had come and were passed, understand how, after all these things, he made man in his own image, after his likeness, and placed in him eyes to see and ears to hear, and a heart to understand and reason, to take counsel. And the Lord contemplated the world for the sake of man, and made all the creation for his sake, and divided it into times. And from the times he made years, and from the years he made months, and from the months he made days, and from the days he made seven. And in these he made the hours, and divided them into small portions that a man should understand the seasons and compute years and months and hours, their alternations and beginnings and ends, and that he should compute his life from the beginning to death and should mediate, so, and should meditate upon his sin and should write down his evil and good deeds. For nothing done is concealed before the Lord. Let each man know his deeds and not transgress the commandments and let him keep my writing securely from generation to generation. When all the creation of visible and invisible things comes to an end which the Lord has made, then every man shall come to the great judgment of the Lord. Then the time shall perish and there shall be no year, no month, nor day and there shall be no hours, nor shall they be reckoned. There shall be eternity, and all the just who shall escape the great judgment of the Lord shall be gathered together in eternal life, and forever and ever the just shall be gathered together, and they shall be eternal. Moreover, there shall be no labour, nor sickness, nor sorrow, nor anxiety, or need, or night, nor darkness, but a great light. And there shall be to them a great wall that cannot be broken down, and bright and incorruptible paradise shall be their protection and their eternal habitation. For all corruptible things shall vanish, and there shall be eternal life. And now, my children, Preserve your souls from all unrighteousness which the Lord hates. Walk before his face with fear and trembling and serve him alone. Worship the true God and not dumb idols, but pay attention to his command and bring every just offering before the face of the Lord. For the Lord hates that which is unrighteous. For the Lord sees everything. Whatever man meditates in his heart and what counsel he plans and every thought is continually before the Lord. If you look at the heavens, there is the Lord, as the Lord made the heavens. If you look at the earth, then the Lord is there since the Lord made firm the earth and established every creature in it. If you scrutinise the depths of the sea and everything under the earth, there also is the Lord, for the Lord created all things. Do not bow down to the work of men, nor to the work of the Lord, leaving the Lord of all creation. For no deed is concealed before the face of the Lord. Walk, my children, in long suffering, in humility, in spite of calamity and insult, and faith, and truth, and the promises, and sickness, and abuse, and wounds, and temptation, and nakedness, and deprivation, loving one another till ye ye depart from this world of sickness, then ye shall be heirs of eternity. Blessed are the just who shall escape the great judgment. And they shall be seven times brighter than the sun, for in this age altogether the seventh part is separated. Now concerning the light, 
the darkness, the food, the sweetness, the bitterness, the paradise, the torches, the fires, the frosts, and other things. I have put all this down in writing that ye may read and understand. When Enoch had discoursed with his people, the Lord sent a darkness upon the earth, and there was a gloom, and it hid those men standing with Enoch. And the angels hastened and took Enoch and carried him to the highest heaven where the Lord received him and set him before his face. And the darkness departed from the earth and there was light. And the people saw and did not understand how Enoch was taken. And they glorified God and they who had seen such things departed to their houses. Enoch was born on the sixth day day of the month to Svan. He lived 365 years. He was taken up into heaven on the first day of the month to Svan, and he was in heaven 60 days. He wrote down the descriptions of all the creation which the Lord had made, and he wrote 366 books and gave them to his sons. And he was on the earth 30 days. And thus he was taken to heaven in the same month to Svan. On the same day, the sixth day, the day on which he was born in the same hour. As each man has but a dark existence in this life, so also in his beginning and birth and departure from this life. And what hour he began, in that he was born, and in that he departs. And Methuselah hasted, and all his brethren, the sons of Enoch, and built an altar in the place called Archuzan, whence and when Enoch was taken up to heaven. And they took cattle and invited all the people and sacrificed them before the face of the Lord. And the people came, and the elders of the people all the hosts of them to the festivity and brought their gifts to the sons of Enoch and made a great festivity, rejoicing and being merry for three days, praising God who had given such a sign by means of Enoch, who had found favour with him, and that they should hand it down to their sons' sons from generation to generation forever. Amen. That's the end of the book. But I want to point out a couple of things. That the month of um, Tetzvin is the third month of the year. It's around this time of the recording. It's around the end of May, early June. It's the same time that we celebrate Pentecost. And in Pentecost, Moses came down with the Torah. And uh, we have the time that the disciples met with the Holy Spirit in the upper room. It's also the time that Enoch went to see the Father. And he was born on Pentecost and he died on Pentecost or he was taken on Pentecost. So I really hope you've enjoyed this book and got a lot from it. Praise be his name. And thank you, Enoch, that we have this book now at the end of the age and we can take a lot of what is written here and ponder on it okay hope you enjoyed it